Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Kiwi um, from Uncle Johnny's Hostel in. Um, God, where the hell are we? Irwin. <laughs> Irwin, Tennessee. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad little town. You know, it's a little tidier than some of the other ones that I've that I've been to. People are taking a little bit more pride in the place. Um, I'm I'm zeroing today. Um, my knee is still unstable, and I uh, got up this morning, um, and it's not, yeah, it's not stable compared to the right one when uh, when I'm walking on it, so hopefully just give it a day of rest, um, like I did when I had that little bit of plantar fasciitis, we'll um, just give it the break it needs. Um, yeah, after it happened... I didn't really feel anything for about 40, 40 minutes, like to an hour. But then it started, um, it really started uh, making itself known. And um, yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun walking with an unstable knee uh, when you're on, you know, tracks, you know, covered in rubble and tree roots and mud and, and everything else. Um, and, you know, that, just that, that slight, um, discomfort and instability. I mean, that, that slowed my day up by about a good hour, almost an hour and a half, over what it should have been. So, yeah, I'm uh, erring on the side of caution, just uh, giving it a day of rest here. And, you know, Uncle Johnny's is uh, is, is a nice place, so that, that there are worse places to zero, believe me. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be one of those people that... Um, you know, gets, you know, a thousand miles in, fifteen hundred miles in, and uh, these niggling injuries end up taking them off the trail. That would really suck. It would really suck to get over a thousand miles plus and then have to get off. Because, I mean, if I get off, if I have to get off for more than a week or so, I probably wouldn't bother going back because I know it wouldn't feel like a through hike to me. Uh, yeah, that's just my take. I know I know people do section hikes and, and everything else, but uh, for me personally, I wanted to do this in, in one in one stretch. So I'm looking after my body. Um, I think I mentioned earlier on in the series that you know I, I do have some injuries that that I have to monitor, and that the knee is one of them, and it's on the same side as um, where I split my pelvis. So, you know, one, one, one thing that's off kilter can end up exacerbating um, something else on, on that side of the body. So, yeah, I do not need that drama at all. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, and the other thing is, you know, I, I, want to, um, I want to enjoy it. You know, I want to enjoy being out here. I don't want to be walking, grimacing. Um, like I was for for the next day, and um, you know that's not enjoyable to me. You know, I mean, yes, it's, this is a, a mental and physical endurance test, basically, that that I've set myself. But at the same time, I want to actually enjoy being out here. I don't want to be pushing myself through pain and discomfort because I mean, you know, at the end of the day, this is like a vacation for me. Um, and I want to be able to enjoy it. I want to be able to take the time to stop and appreciate the beauty that I'm passing through. Um, you know, which is why I'm taking a lot of the video that I am. You know, um, I, I want I want these memories. You know, I don't want to be one of these people that just sort of blasted through the AT and doesn't really have much to show for it except, um, you know, a tight shot selfie with some generic trees passing in the background and that's why I take the time also to take still photography um, you know I'm, I'm seeing some really pretty things um, you know nature's awesome and I, I want to I want to be able to appreciate it to its fullest yes so I created a playlist and in doing so I inadvertently um, double tapped 
one of the episodes. It's uh, day 19. Russell Field to Double Spring. And, um, you know, just because, you know, you're on a touch-sensitive screen on your phone, so it just registered that I hit it twice. So I was like, well, I don't need it on there twice. I'll, I'll delete it. And the phone registered my finger slightly off from where I was about to go and it deleted it from my uploads. So that footage is lost. Um, which sucks. And um, yeah, there was some cursing there early on this morning. Now unless there's some way for me to be able to retrieve it through YouTube, um, I'll, I'll have to have a look at that at some point. So yeah, that, that footage is lost. Um, sorry about that. But we, you know, we have a playlist. Um, I'll be adding to it, you know, each time. So um, whenever you're watching these things, yes, it all comes up sequential. So sorry, I'm new to all this. Damn it. Yeah, Uncle Johnny's man. It's it's it's, it's a neat place. It kind of reminds me of um, some places in Australia where. Uh, you don't really need a permit <laughs> to build some of this stuff, and uh, it's kind of a you know nudge nudge wink wink kind of thing. Um, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do this in California, I'll tell you that. But um, you know, I like it. I like it. It's quirky. It's quirky in a you know questionable permit kind of way. Um, it's set out well. Um, Laundry room needs a little bit of work. Uh, I, I would reconfigure that or build a build a separate building for it. But yeah, but you know the, the cabins are neat. You know it's all rustic and and charming, and uh, you know the prices were reasonable. I mean, especially at this time of year. You know, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm still the only person here. So no, it's, it's been very comfortable, I, and you know I had a really nice sleep in this bed. And uh, until I had uh, my my cousin Vinny moment, where it's like <laughs> it's like two o'clock in the morning or something, and a freight train comes slowly into town, just blasting its air horn, just repeatedly, and I'm like, dude, no one is up. And yeah, this this hostel's like on two roads. It, it's kind of a triangular-shaped lot. So I mean, you you, you get some traffic noise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like one or two in the morning, man. There's nothing, and this thing is just blasting. And it sounded like it was in the room. And I was like, oh, for the love of God, can I get one night, one night, where I sleep all the way through? Yeah, and um. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, one of, there was a viewer comment. I think it was um, when I my chat from um, from Hot Springs that I looked down or sounded down. And uh, you know, no man, it's just tiring. You know, it's tiring. This is this is not a uh, a five mile a, uh, a day walk on a treadmill. It's not really not and then um, you know you're sleeping in shelters or you're sleeping in a tent you know you're not sleeping in your room you're not sleeping at home on my fabulous memory foam mattress with my memory foam pillow um, each night so that that accumulated sleep loss adds up there's no getting around it that accumulated sleep loss adds up and then, you know, you're, you're knocking out, you know, 50 mile averages each day. And not on flat terrain. You know, it's in some very difficult terrain. And under some very difficult conditions. Now normally, in my normal home life, you know, I'm not going for a walk in 7 degree weather. You know, it's not particularly enjoyable. 
I will wait until later in the day or the next day when it warms up. But hey, you know, you're on the trail, you don't have a choice. You're out there and you've got to get into town, you've got to resupply, you got to, you know, do whatever. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just hiring. And, you know, honestly, when you get to your accommodation, you know, whatever it is, that tiredness really starts to hit because now you have the time to relax and mentally register um, how tired you are. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's not a case of me being down. It's, uh, you know, I'm 47, and I'm carrying, you know, double the weight in my pack that, that, that a lot of people in their 20s are carrying. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's tiring. There's no, there's no getting around it. And, yeah, man, it's still cold. It was still cold. When I left, um, uh, Jerry's cabin. Seven degrees, man. Seven. And that wind, that wind, oh my lord. But, you know, I got up in the morning, and I'm taking my tent down. And two sections of my, um expandable aluminium poles, the tent poles, had uh, frozen together, completely frozen together, and you know, it's seven degrees, and you already can't feel your fingers, actually I couldn't feel my, my whole hands really, but, and you just don't want to, you don't want to deal. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those moments where you're glad that you're uh, you're in these locations by yourself, so that you can uh, quickly go to an R-rated scenario, language-wise, and not have to worry about you know hurting people's feelings. And you know, and it's frustrating because you've got to you still got to be careful. You got to be careful that you don't damage these poles. You know. Um, because once that pole's damaged, the tent's unusable. And I like having I like having my tent. You know, if the ground's dry around these shelters, and if it's you know pretty pretty level, and and I know it's going to be cold, I'm going under my tent because it, it's way warmer and that's a smaller space to to heat up with your body heat. But yeah, man, I was just I'm not going to say I was having a hissy fit, but it was. Yeah, it was kind of a hissy fit. Because it was just cold. I was I was really cold and I needed to get going and I just could not get these things to um to come apart. And finally I just had to stand there and I tuck them under my armpits, these two sections of, of two of the two separate poles. So you know these things are like <laughs> you know, nine feet across or something. So I've got these two things, and it's all very awkward and silly, and uh, would have would have made for some fun video if uh, if there was a, another person there to do it. But you know, they finally they finally thawed out, and I was able to get them done. But yeah, once that tent was uh, once that tent was packed away, I wasn't mucking around. As you can see in the video, I I, I had to get going. Um, I couldn't talk properly. Uh, I couldn't feel my extremities, and uh, and it was just uh, I was very thankful that it was a beautiful day that morning to um to start yes yeah, hostile cleanliness hostile cleanliness especially the bathrooms i know we're not paying a lot of money to be here but the way i see it is you're not paying a lot of money and by not a lot of money i mean you know you're averaging you know, 25 to 30 a night. Um, you're not paying a lot of money because you're either in a bunk room with eight other people or you're in a semi-private room with uh, like three beds in it or you're paying more. You know, you, you're getting up into, you know, 35 to $45 to have a private room and a lot of these private rooms are no bigger than a prison cell. The way I see it is the price is a representative of the size of the room and um, the living conditions within, whether it's a private room or a bunker. That doesn't mean that when I come off the trail as a hiker that I want to be 
in a, in dirty accommodations. And I think a lot of these hostels are, are um, being way too lax, way too lax in their cleanliness. You know, um, clean the bathrooms. You know, um, I'm, I'm not going to name individual properties, but you know, <laughs> it's a few. It's a few hostels that I've already been in where the bathrooms don't look like they've been cleaned in a, in a week, two weeks. And it's not good enough. It's not good enough. You know, I'm, I'm here at a time of year where I'm one of like, hell, three people at the hostel. And there's just, there's no excuse for it. Get in there. You've got the staff. And a lot of these places have people doing work for stay. Get them in there and get them cleaning. All right. I'm, I, as a customer, I don't want to pay for accommodations where it looks like you don't give a damn. And the bathrooms are a real sticking point for me. Um, you know, some of these hostels, they'll have these, you know, these helpful signs about, you know, cleanliness is, you know, basically next to godliness. And, uh, you know, make sure you wash your hands. You know, we don't want to spread norovirus, you know. Well, clean the goddamn bathroom. You know, it takes five minutes. It takes five minutes to wipe down a counter, wipe down the faucets, wipe out the sink, wipe down the toilet. You know, and if you've got people working there that don't want to do that, then fire them. Fire them. If I owned a hostel, well, one, I'd be doing it myself anyway because I'm anal. Um, you know, I used to be a butler back in the day as well. So, you know, I mean, yes, my, my standards are high. But I don't think that um, having a clean bathroom is something extraordinary. Wipe the counters down. Clean out the shower. Don't have old... Don't have old pieces of soap sitting there, taking up space. I mean, I'm not touching a piece of soap that looks like it's been there for six months. You know? And there's the there's another train going by. Um, but yeah, man, it, it's a it's a recurring theme that these bathrooms are not being kept clean. And um, yeah, I'm getting pretty tired of it because it's it's such a quick procedure. These are not large bathrooms. Wipe down the counters, clean the toilet, and uh, you know sweeping is not the same as vacuuming. It's not. When you've got hikers coming off the trail with God knows what on their shoes and their clothing, you know, whatever, you know. And the floors are just coated in, like, grit and bits of dried mud and all that stuff. Sweeping it is just atomizing it. Onto everything else that we touch in these hostels. And I haven't been to one yet. And I've been on the trail for... <laughs> I mean, this is day 32. I haven't been to one yet where um, anyone's broken out of vacuum to clean. Vacuum the floors, vacuum under the beds. It is amazing how much stuff you see under these beds. Just, you know, trash and just dust bunnies from, you know, Y2K. You know, vacuum it, vacuum it's a hostel, there's got to be people coming through, people who are dirty, you know, through no fault of their own, I mean, you're coming off a trail, um, and mop the place, man, I mean, if I had more than, like, three people in, I mean, I'd, I'd be vacuuming and mopping every day, because, you know, you've got paying guests, and again, it just, it, it, it irks me, it, it's like, there are, like, um, T taking taking your money and saying be be grateful for ha for having for having a small room or you know an eight to ten people per room situation and um, you know I don't really have to keep the place clean yeah you really do you really do and um, yeah it's um, it's something I'm not happy about and I and I'm gonna start if it keeps continuing I'm gonna start mentioning properties. Ladies, oh my lord. 
so I'm I'm following someone. I'm you know a few days ahead of me. I don't know. And um, there's obviously a female. And um, apparently she cannot bear. She cannot bear the weight of carrying out her her sanitary napkins and tampons, applicators, whatever. You know, you packed it in. And you know, it's just common rule that you pack it out. You know, it's a whole leave no trace thing. Be a good neighbor. If you packed it in, pack it out. And, um, you know, I mean, even if you dug a hole, even if you dug a hole, but, uh, yeah, they can't even do that. I've been, you know, because I'll, I'll go to shelters to show you guys um, what they look like, even if I'm not staying there. You know, it's like the middle of the day and I'm passing through, but, you know, it's just, um, you know, because I want to see them too. I want to see what these shelters look like, and I, and I want to share the information with you so that it's useful for people coming up behind. And so, you know, I'll, I'll be filming and, you know, you know, there's 10 sides around here, yada, yada, yada. But the amount of times, you know, you'll you'll step behind a tree and there's just, you know, an applicator thrown on the ground. Or the, uh, the tampon wrapper that weighs one twentieth of an ounce. Just thrown on the ground. Um... This lady also likes to, God, I, I, you know, I'm not one of those weird guys that really goes up close and personal looking at women's sanitary things in the forest, but I should have taken a photo of, I've, I found them like uh, three times. So it's a pouch that she's put either you know, a tampon or a, um, or a pad and folded up and it goes into a little pouch and then she places it on the ground and puts a little, puts a pebble on it, like like a cherry on top of a cupcake, like it's a, like it's a little gift to the forest, and to other hikers. It's weird, it's weird, man. I mean, at least pick up a big rock, and <laughs> cover the damn thing. <laughs> To be putting these pebbles on them, I, I I just think it's weird. If I was her boyfriend, if I was traveling with her, I'd be like, "Dude, what the hell are you doing?" Now, one, I would just say, "Hey, you're packing it out." You know, I, I don't care. You're packing it out. You know. Yes, every month sometimes it sucks to be a woman, but you know, it's natural. It's just part of your body. Pack it out. Don't don't leave it out. And like I said, mate, you know, God, at least dig a hole. You know, if you're, if you're not going to do that whole leave no trace thing, at least dig a hole. You know, I've got a trowel. It weighs like three ounces. You know? Dig a hole and bury it if, you, if you're not going to do the right thing. You know, so that we don't have to look at it. It's just weird. It's just weird. <sighs> Weight loss. I've lost, uh, was it another seven pounds? I know, you're all thinking, but Kiwi, your face is still so so cute and cherub-like. Uh, yeah. You see, I shaved yesterday. I couldn't do that beard any longer. It's driving me nuts. Um, man, that was a process, shaving. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of hair, a lot of hair to shave off. You know, it's one of those times you're like, damn, I wish I had my clippers with me. But uh, yeah, so that's, uh, what is that, about 14, 14 or 15 pounds now. Um, I feel like I'm losing some muscle mass as well, which I'm not happy about. But, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, yeah. My wife's, my wife's okay with it, just as long as I don't, I don't lose too much of my ass. True story. Yeah, I forgot to mention Hot Springs. That um, you know, for people that don't know this, um, Hot Springs is the uh, 
the point where 50% of all people that attempt the Appalachian Trail um, quit. So I'm in the top 50%. So that, that, that's kind of fun. Um, yes, some viewer comments. You know, I like to address these on an ongoing... <laughs> <laughs> an ongoing process you know just m most of the time it's a really it's really awesome comments and I, I'm so um, thankful that, that that people are, are getting a kick out of what I'm doing and and you know there's, there's been some wonderful people um, contacting me you know you know like you know I live here and if you're if you're passing by this way you know you, you just let me know and I'll you know I'll give you a hand and, you know any anything you need you know help you go resupply or whatever you know that, that's awesome you know, it's um, it's a very New Zealand way of um, treating strangers, and uh, so I, I, you know, I really appreciate it. It's very sweet. And um, but you, you know, there, there's also some comments where you know, if you just watch the video or or read the comment above, you you pretty much answer your your question. But uh, yeah, someone mentioned about pack covers and that. You know, pack covers don't really work. If you just put your stuff in a bag, that'd be dry. And, um, yes. Pack covers... Well, my, my pack cover works on the vertical. There, there, there's no issue on, on, on the vertical sides. You know, the, um, I guess the face and, and both sides. It's just where on the top where it sits on the brain. And, um... And it just, you know, it soaks through after a while. No. Being the, um, being the kind of guy I am, I like to sort of plan ahead a little bit. So, you know, from the get-go, from the from day one, I've always had my gear in two separate um, compactor bags. So I have all my sleeping gear in one on the bottom. So that's my sleeping bag, my fabulous fleecy blankie uh, my sleeping beanie my inflatable pillow my earplugs and my sleeping socks <clears throat> now those small items are in a Ziploc bag inside the compactor bag um, along with the sleeping bag and the, and the blanket now everything else goes in another compactor bag that's sitting on top of that inside my pack and everything's you know rolled down and, and nothing has gotten wet ever so yeah so yes I'm, I'm well aware of of how to keep my stuff dry um and i thoroughly recommend those compactor bags they uh they're, they're pretty tough I've, I've got a spare one with me because you know they don't really weigh anything but i've got a spare one with me just in case you know if i was you know, putting my cooking stove in or, you know, something like that. Just some sort of weird sharp edge made a cut in it and it was too big for me to, like, tape up. Um, then I've got a spear. And I'm not going to be caught out having wet anything. Um, and what I will say is that once the rain stops and you take... I think it's important that once the rain stops and you, you have that feeling like it's stopped for the day, get that rain cover off give it a good shake, the water comes off it pretty easy, I mean, you just give it a good shake, and then um, make sure your, packs, your pack is exposed for the rest of the trip, like the rest of the day, and um, the two times that that sort of um, thing has happened where, you know, it rained really hard in the morning and then it just went away, my, my pack was basically dry by the time I, I finished uh, my hike that day. Uh, what does take longer is the um, the padding up against your back and on the waist belt. But again, I mean, by the next day, you know, you, you, you're you good to go. So, but yeah, don't, don't leave. Don't leave. And like, same thing with my poncho. Um, as soon as I'm dealing with the rain cover, I... I take my poncho off and I give that a, a damn good shake as well and I, I put that through the um, the elastic zigzag cord on the back of my pack and um, you know let that dry out too and if 
I can at the shelter if there's um, pegs in the wall or nails or uh, what do you call it, lag bolts. I'll, I'll hang it there too so that it airs out. You don't want to have your, your wet weather gear just bundled up and then put in your pack, you know, because it's not going to dry. You know, you've, you've got to got to air these things out at the end of the day. Hang on, trying to find myself here. Yeah, someone's commenting that uh, I'm I'm panting less, as in um, not breathing as heavy. And I must be getting my trail legs. And, um, you know, I pretty much... I mean, I'm, I'm a, you know, a reasonably fit guy. Um, you know, injuries aside. Um, and, re you know, regardless of the weight that I started at. Um, I'm, I'm a fairly fit guy. And um, my legs don't feel... They, they, they never felt like, oh my god, you know, what, what have I gotten myself into? But that being said, probably just my, my cardio, um, walking up and down these hills all day, has improved. Um, but strength-wise, um, I, feel, I feel the same. The, the, the strength side of things was never really going to be in this. You know, I've got you know, like borderline um, exercise-induced asthma that, you know, makes it, makes it a little tricky to breathe. And um, I had some pretty horrendous sinus infections in the army um, on several occasions that required multiple doses of antibiotics because, um, yeah, we, we get around some pretty nasty stuff. And that alone has permanently um, altered my my sinus cavities through here, and um, the membrane is uh, basically permanently thickened. So my ability to breathe, um, depending on the circumstances, is um, yeah a little impaired. And um, you know I've been clearing my nose all day, every day, every day, because you know you're you're walking in the forest, you're kicking up leaves. You know, these strong winds blowing atomized whatever into you. So that that all that all hinders my ability to breathe. And uh, and you know, for me, yeah, you know, it's not a race. It is not a race. You know, if I'm going up a hill and I've and it's a long hill, <laughs> and there's been a few of them, man, I'll just pick it. I'll just pick a tree next to the trail and say, all right, I'm, I'm walking up to that tree and then I'm then I'm leaning on my poles for a bit. And, you know, that, that tree could be 50 metres up the hill. It could be 30 feet. You know, it just depends. And a lot of the time, it's not so much that you're you're out of breath. It's just your, your calves and your hamstrings and your glutes are just reaching muscle failure. And uh, you just need to give them a break for a few seconds. And so that's what I'll do. I'll just, you know, you'll be, you'll be on a slope like this and you'll just be leaning on your poles. And you, you just give them a minute. Yeah, you just give them a minute. And then you start walking again. You pick another tree next to the trail and you just, you know, rinse and repeat. But, uh, yeah. I, I think a lot of people end up pushing themselves out of... Um, Vanity, you know, pride, and um, you know they they don't want anybody that started after them on this hike to pass them, and you know, I I could care less. I could care less. I don't care if someone started two weeks after me and they pass me. I just want to be the guy that finishes. You know, it's it's a it's a task that I've set myself, and I'm determined to do it unless you know unless my injuries take me off the trail. And I really hope that doesn't happen because I, I really want to, I really want to really get there. 
But yeah, I mean, not that I'm not a competitive person. And I'm competitive with myself as well. But, um... As with most things in life, I, I prefer to have some balance to it. You know, I mean, I'll... I'll, you know, I, the other day I did 20 miles. You know, it's my first 20 mile day. So I was pretty stoked with that. But if the next day my body said, man, you shouldn't have done 20 miles yesterday. And, um, and the trail throws up a, a really crappy piece of trail at me. Man, I'm totally okay doing 10 miles. You know, I'm, I'm just not that vain about it. I'll do, I'll do what I can do. Listen to my body. Get the job done. And, uh, and make it all the way. And uh, I think, I think a lot of people lose sight of that. Um, I think they just end up pushing themselves. And, you know, like I said, I mean, I've met, I think it's like three people on the trail so far. And, um, you know, they did over a thousand miles. I then had to quit and couldn't do anything again until the next year. And that's not a place I want to be. I, I, I don't, I don't want to be that guy or that hiker. Yeah, sorry ladies. Yeah, someone, someone said, how could you pass up beer if you're a Kiwi? No, it's true, we are, we are large beer drinkers, um, per capita, well, volume per capita. I think we beat out the Germans. Um, you know, if the beer was, if the beer was at my shelter for the evening, Yeah, Kiwi, Kiwi, Kiwi would have been having a couple of those beers for sure. But you know, it was like, I think it was like 11.30 in the morning. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I I just prefer to keep my wits about me on the, on the trail, you know. And because you're, you're tired and, um, and, you know, probably, well, you know, I'm, I'm normally somewhat dehydrated. The the bear, and, you know, you're exercising. So the bear would, would hit you um, a little harder. And, um, yeah, I, I don't need, I don't need anything impairing my ability to, to focus on where I'm putting my feet. Um, you know, I, I don't particularly want to be tripping and landing on rocks or tripping or sliding and going off the side of a hill. Yeah, I'll be right with you. Yeah, sorry about that. Nice people here uh, asking me if I needed a shuttle ride to breakfast. Um, but yeah, it was funny, you know, because I lost the audio footage from that day. And there was, uh, there was a section there that I was showing you. It was a real rocky hairpin turn going up this hill. And it was at that junction where I, where I was like, man, you know, I could have just had one beer. But yeah, plus I'm a, you know, I'm more of a, a wine and scotch and bourbon drinker. So it, it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't that hard for me to, to turn down. I think that is about it. Um... Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm zeroing today. I'm giving this knee a break. I'm going to load up on ibuprofen again. Um, I think it will help enormously if I go back to that pizza or you can eat buffet today. Um, I think that will really help with inflammation. <laughs> now, it does have a salad bar. So, you know, I, I, am, I am getting some vegetables into me. And, uh, you know, take it easy today. Um... It's been nice having Wi-Fi that, that works at a, at a decent rate. Now, it's weird, man. It's weird that that little Verizon hotspot, which is just a box like this big, that Lonnie had at uh, Wolf Creek Hostel, that was the fastest upload of any place I've been, by, and by a margin. By an absolute margin. 
I think I was doing 30 minute videos there and it was going up in about 20 to 30 minutes which is which is pretty quick yeah it's pretty quick you know some other places two and a half hours no not not in 2017 here it's been taking um, about an hour give or take they've I think they said they've got like three three Wi-Fi things here so you know he, he's got a better setup um, you know I think this place has been there a while so you know he, he's he, he's got his got his act together um, but yeah man like I said Wi-Fi man after after having a shower and getting food the amount of people who are videotaping or you know blogging their their journey um, having the ability to to you know in a reasonable amount of time get these things uploaded so that you can get on with your day you know um, I think it's really you know I, I, it's, it's really important you know it's 2017 people are uploading you know it's all very well to hit decent download speed but man you, you've got to have you've got to have a package with your Wi-Fi that allows fast upload um, because you know I'd like to just upload something have my phone with me go into town do what I need and then come back I don't I don't want to leave my phone um, because you know maybe maybe I'd like to call my wife in town maybe there's a better signal there or you know, maybe there's something in town that I'd like to film, you know, for for my memory and for friends and family and, and, you know, for the subscribers to my channel. So, you know, if my phone has to stay in my room for two and a half hours, you know, it's just, it's just an unnecessary hassle. And I, I don't understand why why more hostel um, owners aren't uh, getting, getting a better system going. But, uh, yeah, tomorrow... Tomorrow I'm setting off. I've I've got um, <laughs> I went to the supermarket yesterday because one of the guys here said, "You know, they've got these these ribeyes on sale," and I'm like, "Really?" So we went down and they're prime rib. Um, they're not ribeyes; they're on the bone, and they're you know, they're nice looking steaks, you know. And I got two of them for like ten bucks fifty, and they're like this thick. So I'm gonna have one of those tonight, and I'll cook the other one because I got a grill here that you can use. Um, it's it's a nice setup. So I'm gonna grill one of those tonight, and I'll grill the other one for breakfast in the morning. And when I go to town today, my had a hankering for croissants because you know. Prime ribbon croissants go so well together. But uh, yeah, I'll get some croissants and some some nice butter and jam, and I think that'll set me up for the day well. Um, weather today is supposed to be pretty dodgy. It's, it's nice at the moment, but um, the forecast is like, you know, thunderstorms and lightning and, you know, super high wind advisories. So yeah, the zero today is kind of timing things well in that regard. Um, but the week going forward is going to be a lot colder. We're getting back down into the 20s. Um, but it's mostly sunny and sort of partly cloudy. So when I set off tomorrow, it'll be good to to have that uh, that meat and the, um, the buttery croissants in me. Um, that should get me through most of the day. Because um, I think over that day... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm climbing over 2,000 feet again. So that is it. Um, I will get back to you tomorrow when I when I set off and uh, enjoy my time here at um, Uncle Johnny's. Again, I, I recommend it. It's, it's a it's a neat, unique, um, quirky place that they're and they're still working on it, still improving it, making things better. So. Yeah, I, I recommend it, and you know, God, it's right off the trail. I mean, it's a two-minute walk. So that is it from Kiwi. Um, day thirty-two. It's a zero day. 
I'm taking it easy. I'm in a room with some rather old movies on videotape, and uh, when the rain kicks in later on today, I may just uh, cozy up in here and spend a day in bed, resting my knee and uh, watching movies, which is, uh, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's really not. So, Take care, everyone. I will see you tomorrow, day 33, uh, leaving Irwin, Tennessee.